Hey there, RC Girl here. Today, we are stopping by a beach on Highway 101 in Northern California. CADEX FPV sent me one of their latest high definition FPV or first person view set of goggles and video transmitter. The Waxnail Avatar HD FPV system. We're gonna be hooking this system up to one of my RC crawlers, the Traxxas TRX4 High Trail F-150. If you've been wanting to install an FPV system in your RC car, I will walk through my complete setup Stay tuned. I am currently on my way home from a hobby shop tour that I've been doing in Oregon. We are driving down Highway 101. I stopped at a beach turnoff and we're going to go out on the dunes and try out this system in one of my RC crawlers. High definition FPV systems are relatively new in the remote control hobby. DJI released their high definition system a couple years ago and it's great to see other options out there popping up. I've been interested in putting in an FPV system in one of my cars before. I am familiar with analog video transmission where it's kind of fuzzy. Distance for surface use wasn't really super enjoyable for me but I may soon be a convert because the high definition video feed is such great quality, so it is way more enjoyable to use than some of the analog systems I've tried before. So let's take it away. <laughs> Low voltage cut off on the battery. Lasted so freaking long. Pretty much the whole trip at all the hobby shops. And didn't last the beach though. Pretty cool. Gotta get out of the rain though. It's freaking freezing. <gasps> we got a little rained out there. And I also hit low voltage cut off in my truck. So. Whew. All right, so I'm back from the hobby shop tour. I actually had to move recently, so things have been a little chaotic. Now I wanna walk you guys through the full setup, how everything works, how I hooked it up. I've had a little bit more time to play around with it and fine tune things. The full setup is currently $629 at the time of filming this, so it is a little bit pricey for sure. I totally understand that. But the thing is for surface applications, if you're putting this in a car, you really only need one setup, one goggle, one VTX that you can swap among all your vehicles. So it's basically just a one one-time purchase and you can use it in all your trucks. First, let's talk about our goggle setup. So these are the Waxnail Avatar FPV goggles. Very, very similar to the Fat Shark Dominators. Here's everything that comes in the Avatar FPV goggle kit. You're going to get your goggles here. We'll talk about those in more detail. You're gonna get two sets of left-hand polarized antennas. These are gonna be patch antennas and then these little omnidirectional antennas here. You're going to get a power cable for powering the goggles. This has a XT60 connector. You're going to get a quick start guide, a little goggle wipe. These are little pads here that you can insert around the goggles to make sure that there's no light bleed comes with a little carry case here. Let's take a look at the goggles. First, we're gonna put our antennas on. We're gonna put these omnidirectional ones up top here. And we're gonna put the directional patch antennas on the front. These have a dual 1080p OLED micro display, so each one of these is its own independent screen. It took a little getting used to looking through this, but once you adjust these to your eyeballs, it works just fine and I got used to it in no time. As far as all our buttons and switches, this is a little fan defogger here, so you can turn that up and down to make sure that the goggles are not fogging up. This button up here is the back button if you're on the menu. This also has onboard recording to a little SD card that is right here between your eyes. It comes included with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So you can record directly to the goggles. Here is a little joystick to toggle through the menu so you can do back and forward and press in for select. Here is where our power cable plugs in. 
This little dot here is our bind button, so you can bind to your VTX, your video transmitter. And then looking down here, you can adjust the spacing between your eyeballs because each of these is an independent screen. So you basically you're gonna line them up with the center of your eyes and you can also focus them. So these are not going to fit over most glasses. So what you can do is you can rotate these and focus each eye independently to your prescription. Kind of neat. The audio is going to come out down here. This is our power button on and off. And then this is a USB-C to HDMI output. So if you want to put the goggle display on a bigger screen or a bigger monitor, you're gonna have to get a USB-C to HDMI output and you can transmit your video feed to a bigger screen. We have a little Velcro strap back here. And then here's where you can insert those pads. Depending on your face shape, you might need to add a little bit more to make sure that there's no light bleed when you're flying or driving. And then this is the Avatar HD VTX or video transmitter and camera. They also make a 1S camera, which I think would be really great for micro crawlers. They're already on the Avatar HD V2, which has a couple good updates, including compatibility with GyroFlow, which makes your video feed a lot more stable. So would definitely recommend that one. Here's everything that comes in the kit. So you're gonna get your video transmitter with a nice little heat sink here. You're gonna get two omnidirectional diversity antennas. And I think that we want these mounted perpendicular to the ground so that our feed is sort of spreading out like that. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to mount this. And then it has their little tiny walk snail camera does have some mounting holes on the side if you're gonna be mounting this to a quad or a multi-rotor. I think I'm just gonna use a little double-sided sticky tape to attach this to my T-Rex 4, but it does come with all the hardware to mount this to your multi-rotor. There's a couple different mounting holes here. We're actually going to be mounting this to a fan system that I had 3D printed. There are two ports on this, one here and then one on the side. It comes with a USB cable to plug into the port on the side here and that is to update your firmware and also to get off any videos that are stored on here. This actually has eight gigabytes of internal storage so you can record to the VTX itself or to the goggles if you have an SD card in there. And then we have this cable here. It typically has four wires coming off of it. Two of these are for power and then these would be to plug into your ESC on your multi-rotor. It has a lot of data transmission to the goggles but since we are using an RC car I basically unclipped the two cables that we're not using and just have the power. But as I mentioned, this is not super plug and play for surface applications because these get very, very hot, like super hot, 140 degrees hot, and they overheat very quickly. These are designed to have high airflow for cooling. When you're flying quads, this is moving very rapidly through the air getting cooling, but on something like an RC car, we're not gonna have that same airflow. So I had to make a custom fan system to cool this. I picked up this high powered fan on Amazon. This is a 40 millimeter fan. It can run off up to 8.4 volts. 16,000 RPM, so this is a little bit loud, but it's definitely gonna keep our BTX from overheating. I ran this a couple times without a fan, and after about three to five minutes, this gets too hot and shuts down. We're gonna be powering this whole system, fan and VTX, through a BEC so that I can get the correct voltage for my fan. I don't wanna overpower it. So I'm gonna be running a 3S LiPo, and this BEC is very cool. I have this in a couple of my trucks where you can set the voltage to basically whatever you want. And then lastly, I had to pick up this Y harness to split our battery power to the video transmitter and to the fan. And a huge, huge thank you to Trail Features on Instagram for 3D printing this fan mount system. Basically this little funnel here that will draw heat away from your VTX and cool it. I found this print file on Thingiverse and he was so grateful and printed this out in a carbon filament so it can withstand really high temperatures before getting too flimsy. All right, so here is our full setup. First, let's talk batteries. So I'm using three different LiPo batteries, one to power our goggles, one to power the fan and the video transmitter, and then one to power the car separately. 
So everything's basically being powered independently. I'm using 3S batteries for the FPV setup and a 2S battery in the truck itself. And then my very high tech antenna setup, basically I have two straws inserted in the roll bar back here and the antennas are zip tied to the two straws to keep them upright. And then this whole unit is basically just 3M sticky taped to the car, which is a really nice, not permanent solution to move this among vehicles if you want. And then we have the walk snail camera, just 3M sticky taped there at the top of the car. I lack a little bit of knowledge in the best antenna direction and setup for surface applications. It seems all the stuff I can find online is mostly for air. So if you have any advice, uh, please do let me know, but this is the setup I have going right now. And actually since the time of filming this, Walksnail has come out with their V2 system for their VTX and camera setup. So it might look a little bit different. I think the new system has only a single antenna. But basically, if you want to do this setup, you're going to have to do a little bit of customization. Someone also mentioned that you can add another servo to your camera if you want to get the head pan. Basically, what you do is you split your servo signal. And as you turn the car, it'll also pan the camera so you can look around. That would be kind of cool. So that's something we're going to look into next for sure. But for now, we just have a fixed position and it's been working really nice. Next, I wanted to see, can I drive from the deck, seated on the deck, through the house and down to a single track trail below the house? And please pardon the mess, still in the middle of moving, but I was able to make it through the house and through the front door, had a little bit of signal loss. You're definitely gonna get the best signal with no obstructions, no interference, but drove through the house and to the trail made my way down the trail turned around and had no signal loss so pretty cool i'm still playing around with some of the settings in the goggles themselves to get the best signal and distance you can increase the power output of the vtx and also select different channels that may have better signal so i'm still playing around with some of that i also snuck around the house while the guys were working on their motorcycles crept slowly past the dog and then banged on the door a couple times so they'd let me in, was able to drive through the house and make it home safely. Let's talk about distance. How far does the signal go before it breaks up? According to the specs, the Walksnail Avatar range is approximately four kilometers, which is super far. I wanted to test this out, so I took it to an open park where there'd be fewer obstructions. I put my GPS watch in the car to see how far we could go before the video feed cut out. And I actually only got 220 meters or 0.22 kilometers during my first test out before the video feed cut out, which is just a fraction of the four kilometers that it should be. So I did a little research online and I realized actually that was my fault. Someone said in one of the forums to get the maximum range with the Walksnail system, you need to make sure to take it out of standby mode. So mine, I checked in the goggles. It was in standby mode this whole time that I've been testing it, which limits the output to the VTX substantially. When the system's connected to a flight controller and you arm your quad, it'll automatically take it out of standby mode. I don't have it connected to a flight controller. I needed to manually take it out of standby mode. So day two, I went back to the park and I had substantially better range. And according to the forums, the Traxxas TQI receiver transmitter that I'm using in the car, the range of that is only 840 feet or 0.25 kilometers, in which case we're going to lose signal to the car way sooner than we will lose video feed. And I wanted to see if that was actually the case. Once I had it out of standby mode, I made it really far through the park um, and actually my car cut out just completely stopped moving. But it wasn't actually a signal loss because even when I got close, the car wouldn't move. So something was going on electronically that I have to figure out and troubleshoot. This wasn't an LVC issue, not an overheating issue. It just cut power altogether. Still had amazing video feed. So unfortunately, I was not able to do my full range test, but I did drive across a huge field, a few soccer fields before the car stopped and had great video feed. So I don't think that range is going to be an issue with this. I'll have to do a second video where I do a full range test once I get the power issues to my truck sorted out. I also played around with this after kite surfing up the coast. I forgot my SD card, so I recorded directly to the VTX. And unfortunately, the video file was corrupted, so I didn't get all the footage but it's been really fun playing around with this in different settings and seeing how this functions. 
So would I recommend this? Is this worth the spend? Is FPV technology good enough and fun enough for surface applications? I think it's definitely an adventure. You're gonna have to have a little bit of knowledge of wiring and tinkering, access to someone that can 3D print you some parts. Um, hopefully in the future, there's better stabilization on some of the video. It looks like the V2 version of the VTX and camera setup does have stabilization, which is nice to see. It'd be nice to see the FPV companies coming out with a ready to go surface setup. Seems like most of the FPV stuff is tailored for the air applications. I had a ton of fun trying out the Avatar FPV system. So cool that we have the opportunity to have high definition video feed. Really interested to see where this goes in the surface side of the remote control hobby. If you're looking for an FPV setup for your rig, definitely one to check out. I know the price is a little bit steep, but as I mentioned, you just need one of these and you could swap it into any of your vehicles. Huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. We got a bunch more hobby shop tour stops coming up, so make sure you guys subscribe if you don't wanna miss it. I'll see you later. Thank you.